in Hell 2 of the Five Difficulty, the group size requirement for Wild Dungeons and Hidden Remains has been reduced from four to two. We can now do dungeons with two people. With two people. Thank you, God. Oh my God, I just started reading this. I have to record. These are the leaked patch notes. Look at this, Diablo Immortal August, August 17th maintenance. What this is, is an automatically Google translated version of the Chinese webpage where they put the patch notes early. Now I kind of peeked through this just a little bit, but the, the, the translation's really bad. Okay, but, but I gotta break down and explain this to you. Limited time gameplay, the dispute of echoes. It's between the shadows and the immortals. Okay, you have to be over level 30 to compete in this. There's a duel. After the duel, you're gonna gain an exclusive reward. So it looks like there's almost like a 1v1 duel of some kind or some kind of more PvP event. So we're getting new PvP. But look at this. Limited time gameplay, the chaos secret realm. What this actually does is a chaos rift that does not allow any equipment or anything when you enter. All properties will be set to their original state. The rift effects of the chaos rift will affect all life in the rift, including monsters and you. Chaos rift will limit the skills you can use. The chaos rift will change the scene and the monsters every time you enter. Chaos rift has exclusive chaos equipment. You can strengthen yourself in the rift, but you cannot take it out of the rift. This is almost like an Iron Man mode for the Chaos Rift. You start with nothing and get better and better equipment. The Secret Realm will give you an exclusive lucky level. The higher level, the easier it is to meet the high star equipment and attributes will be better. So I know the, the translation is terrible. Basically, this is a secret area that you're gonna be farming. Everything you get is only within it. It's like its own level of server. You cannot pay the win in it. You just have to grind it. It resets every Wednesday. All of the skills and everything will be set. So it's sort of a skill-based type of deal, okay? The, it records the challenge history of each class and you must complete the storyline, okay? This opens August 17th. So this is coming to the game August 17th. So we have Dispute of the Echoes August 17th. We have the Chaos Mystery August 17th. Two new, really big patches, okay? We have a new costume. I'm not really going to talk about the costume. We don't have pictures of that. Then look at this. We have new equipment, legendary equipment. Again, 36 new class legendary items. So every single class gets more legendary items and we have a list of them. Okay, so going to the mage here, shooting head. When attacked by frost ray six times, it will be frozen for two seconds. It's got shoulders, teleporting removes the most recently acquired negative effects. You get a cleanse on your teleport. The lightning nova turns a burst nova forward and when you click it again and reach the ends, explodes. Now you get some kind of new thunder cloud. I think that's chest plate. The main hand arcane cyclone no longer charges and said summons an updraft. Frost armor now resists six damages and applies to code the surrounding enemies. And then meteorites now instantly drop on multiple tiny meteors forward. So it looks like mages get some new type of builds here. Barbarian, what do they get? Uh, damage taken during Unrion Wrath would trigger a rage counter attack causing damage to surrounding enemies. Wow, that seems great. So during the whole like, you can't be hit thing, if they're actually targeting you down while, while you're immune to damage, you're gonna be dealing damage back. That seems like a, an awesome uh, bar buff. You take 20% less damage during Cyclone Strike. Uh, for, where's the new shoulders for Barb? Furious Rush collides with terrain. Shockwave causes damage. Uh, seems all right. Main hand grab is changed to dash forward. Grab the first enemy he hits and then continue the charge for a while. Then jump up and smash to the ground, causing group da damage and a slowing effect. So looks like they're adding more uh, good PvP changes. Like the Undone Right seems good in PvP. The grab change seems good in PvP because it's the dash. Now you have the chain applies a drain mark to the enemy. Attacking the enemy gains life recovery with 5% of the damage. I wonder if this applies for teammates too, because if it's a party wide one, it's going to be quite good. When you jump and hit the enemy, the enemy will be knocked in the air. So it looks like there's some new good pants. It's uh, and then we have the martial artist, AKA the monk. Spiritual body is dedicated to you and you can split 20% of the damage. Uh, let's see, turns into wave energy released in all directions, taking damage during the use of Zen Guardian would trigger a shelter counterattack, causing damage, a lot of counterattack mechanics. Spirit body changes into a spirit body that rushes out in the designated direction, taunting and attacking enemies along the way. Oh, taunt, you don't see taunt too often. Exploding palms now, fold their palms together, gathering all enemies in front of them into the middle. I love that. I love gathering abilities, quite good for group fighting. And then my of the tower kicks can now charge up for a powerful kick, knocking back enemies and having a stun. Seems good. The Witcher, which I, what, what is exactly the Witcher? So we have the martial artist, the barbarian. That's gotta be Demon Hunter. I think that's Demon Hunter, okay? Scattering mass when casting hatred releases terrifying inner demon that fears enemies. So you get a fear now built into that. That's nice. Multi-shot will also knock back enemies. Can only trigger once every six seconds for players. So it seems like they're giving more CC to the Demon Hunter. Smoke bomb turns into a smoke bomb at designated location, reducing the, uh, the vision 
vision of the enemy, so we get another blind. Uh, the main hand, every time four explosion arrows hit, it generates a more powerful explosion to knock back the enemies. The effect can only be triggered on players once every three seconds. So more knockbacks for Demon Hunter, which has got to be good in PvP. The offhand shadow hits uh, knife hits enemies with negative stats. Its damage is increased by 15%. So if you have bleeding or something, you're doing more damage. Um, the Phantom Knife becomes a hatred trap when triggered nearby enemies are in prison for three seconds in which your damage in is increased. Maybe that's good for PvE there. So now moving on to the Crusader. Shield's protected, which can reflect enemy projectiles and cause damage. So he has a reflection now in the head, increases damage to the Holy Light Shield on the shoulders. The close, aka the chest plate, is heavenly retribution now summons heavily thunderstrike as specific specific location dealing continuous damage, so he gets more continuous damage. The main hand turns into a, a swipe with a chain hammer, forming a storm that slowly drags enemies along the way. I love the, that they're adding more dragging and moving of the enemies. I think stuff like this is gonna be important. Scourge now also implies 3% for each enemy hit up to a maximum of 15%. And the new pair of pants, which now ride a thunderous warhorse to continually shock random enemies around and enemies who are shocked three times when they're stun state. That seems good. But now we get to talk about the one that I really like, which is Necromancer. Here we go. So I haven't seen these yet. I'm excited to see. So 20% of the damage you take is borne by the stone demon. So basically your golem absorbs 20% of your damage. You compare this maybe with the skeleton champion summons, which takes 10% of your damage, so you're now blocking 30%. Um, the shoulders, the piercing stab also knocks enemies back. Piercing stab also knocks enemies back. I wonder if piercing stab is, is the bone spear, is what they consider that. I'm not sure what the translation is for that. When using the ghost shape spell, it will remove the imprisoning slow in, and code state from the body. Wait, when using the ghost shape spell, it will remove the imprisoning, slowing, and code state from the body. I don't actually understand what this means. Someone in the comments is gonna have to explain this one to me. And you, oh, this must be Wraith Form. When you go into Wraith Form, ah, so Wraith Form now removes crowd control, basically. You get to remove the crowd control effects from you and continue in Wraith Form without being crowd controlled. Okay, I get it now. Uh, the Scythe now throws a Helico Scythe forward, knocking enemies back and dealing multiple damage over time. Uh, Scythe now no longer charged. This is actually great because it knocks enemies back and we needed one additional bullshit move in PvP because we already had four bullshit moves. Now we get to have a fifth one that we get to replace. I can see this replacing maybe something like bone armor. It goes onto the main hand. So now we don't have to worry about, um, like the main hand always was kind of bad in PvP because you either went with the bone spear or you went with the simulacra or whatever it's called. This is actually great, I think, for PvP. This is awesome. Uh, offhand, the Wraith now summons an uncontrolled, powerful Wraith that roams randomly and does damage to enemies that passes through, now charged up to two times. Wow, we get a, we get a summon from the Wraith too for the offhand. That's actually amazing also because the offhand, like I'm saying, is bad. Uh, the main hand and offhand were bad for PvP. These are two changes that make them better for PvP. Wow. Curse of Darkness generates curse eyes that will continuously taunt surrounding enemies. I can see that being good too, maybe, depending upon how exactly the taunt works. Could use the taunt to maybe stop people from getting towards you and things like challenge rifts. That's that's interesting. Looks like there's uh, reincarnation of the ancestors past. What else is going on? New ancestor robe will be August 23rd. Follow the guidance. Enhance moral stones, legendary equipment artifact, uh, equipment and legendary gems. So we get unlock legendary gems. Every night there's a mysterious moon. There's a monthly tour. Participating in the lottery will give you a rich game props. You have the opportunity to win Xbox, Xbox, Zippo, Diablo custom lighters, etc. Okay, so apparently this is some kind of like actually in-game tour thing where you get to win real stuff. That's probably for China only, I would assume. Um, experience optimization, here we go. In hell to the five difficulty, the group size requirement for wild dungeons and hidden remains has been reduced from four to two. We can now do dungeons with two people, with two people. Thank you, God. Okay, if more than two people participate in the team, additional treasure shop would drop and the dungeon is completed and the treasure chest needs to be opened by four people. Okay, so you get an additional treasure chest if you do it with four people. Okay, got it. Um, let's continue here. Optimize the game related experiences, adjusted some in-game designs, demon gods, gaze of desolation, sanctuary is facing a huge threat. So there's a new chapter, new season quest journey, new ancestral notes, probability of goblins dropping rare and legendary equipment while running and defeating. Let's go! Goblins actually do something. God, I asked for this. Adjusted the battle experience of wild bosses. Uh, optimized the battle experience of the Echo Ice Cave dungeon. Yes, dude, that one was so slow. Optimized the display of recommended battle levels for more of the rifts. Okay. Uh, PVP optimizations. Optimize the magic launching of Warhammer of the Holy Rite. It's making it easier for players to match the match. I don't know what that means. Opening hours of the treasure house are adjusted. That's the, okay, the vault is now only open an hour a day. Thank Christ, it was a terrible experience. The market uh, related experience has been optimized. Optimizing the benefits of the monthly card. 
Uh, let's see, market so that the sale is overtime, but we combine into one notification email, so then the notifications won't spam you as much. I need to see less of a delay in the market though. Optimize the lag phenomenon when buying a large number of goods and batches in the market. I've never experienced that. Craftsman of Sanctuary been still from the World Stone. Transfer backup equipment can carry on the essence of inheritance, helping the warriors exert great power. So professional transfer backup equipment, transfer backup equipment to carry on essence. I'm not really sure what that does. Maybe that helps with like changing classes. The translation is not great. And then there's some text changes and then some bug fixes with like the, the super speed that you could do in the tomb uh, and the heart of the Phoenix wasn't displayed correctly. That's it. Wow, we got good changes. Uh, dungeon change, only two players can't solo it, but at least you can just do it with a buddy now, all the way to Hell 5, awesome, love that. We got new legendary items. Goblins drop legendaries now. Uh, what else did we get here? Wait, I know I'm missing some big stuff. We got the Chaos Rift, which is like some Iron Man mode. You only get equipment in the Chaos Rift, which only works for the Chaos Rift. You can't pay the win in that, non-pay the win content. Um, and then there's a new in-game event called the Dispute Echoes. Wow, actually looks pretty good. I'm hyped for that. I'm glad that it looks like there's some non-pay the win, like some actual shit that pay the win doesn't help you at all. Like the legendary gems and all that doesn't do anything. You actually have to play the game. Love that. Thumb up on the video if you're excited. I'm actually excited. I'll see you guys in game.